from enumeration, privilege escalation, post exploitation, persistence, active directory and pivoting, antivirus evasion, client side attacks, you name it. These are all things I learned in the Pin 200 course offered by Offensive Security. I purchased the 90 day lab access for $1,499, which was a lot, and I think that is their cheapest bundle, if I'm not mistaken. My lab time expired just a few days ago, the 12th of July, and uh, I finished with 64 out of 70 machines. So I have quite a bit to say. Let's talk about it. What up, what up, YouTube? If you're new here, my name's Toddy. I'm a noob and I'm trying to be like Ipsec, so I decided to purchase the OACP, which is the gateway into hacking, so people say. One thing I'd like to say straight off the bat is that I do not think the OACP is an entry-level certification. It is hard, it is brutal, it is not for the faint-hearted. If you're a noob and you want this to be your first hacking certification, go ahead, be my guest. But uh, prepare for a long journey ahead because mm, despite the fact that it's hard, I've personally learned a lot from both the course material, which is a PDF that's about 850 pages, by the way, and the lab. There are about 70 machines total in the labs. So when you're looking at both the course material and the labs, you have to try to find the balance between getting the most out of both the labs and the course material. Some people focus a lot more time on the course material and writing the lab report which takes quite a while to be honest. And at some point they realize that their lab time has expired and they've only pwned like 10 machines. And then on the other hand, there's people that jump straight into the labs. They have no idea what they're doing. They bump around, they waste time because some stuff is OSCP specific. You're gonna find it in the PDF. And so they go back to the PDF, they start looking for it. They don't know exactly what they're looking for. Keep wasting time, come back, and maybe they've gotten to about 45 machines but I've done less than half the PDF. All I'm trying to say is find a balance that works for you. That is what I personally did. I went through the things I thought I needed to go through in the PDF, and then I started the labs. And hence I did, I think most of the PDF, I'm lying, I did about 32% of it. It shows in the portal and 64 machines. You are that nigga. So in doing both the course material and the labs, the first thing I learned was enumeration. A lot of people talk about how the OSCP is tailored to teaching you specifically enumeration. For me, this was hard to quantify because at some point I had no clue what that meant. What exactly am I enumerating? What is enumeration? What am I looking for? Those might be some of the questions you have when it comes to enumeration. And the conclusion I've personally come to is that you get better at this with experience. And experience in the hacking world comes with doing boxes either on TriHackMe, HackTheBox, Cybersecurity Labs, whatever it may be. Some OSCP specific stuff when it comes to enumeration would be getting to page five of Google search when you're looking for an exploit. You'd be surprised to find that sometimes there's an exact walkthrough of the scenario you're in on page five of Google. It's funny, but it is what it is, it happens. And this is one reason some people end up saying the OSCP is like a CTF because they want you to find a specific thing I mean, they make you gather a lot of information, but at the end of the day, they they really just want you to find one thing. Another thing with regards to enumeration is looking at what an exploit does. Once you find it, look at what it's doing. Depending on what language it may be in, it might need tinkering, especially if it's a Python script. Some people will tell you that you don't need to know how to code for the OSCP or in cybersecurity at large. I'm here to tell you that it is a force multiplier. But it is a force multiplier if you are good at writing code. And you should at least learn how to read code. Check out this video about coding with regards to cybersecurity. More often than not, your exploits, especially Python scripts, like I said, are going to require tinkering. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna have a hard time and you might not even get in, which would be pretty sad to be honest. You couldn't get in because you couldn't tinker with a Python script. It is what it is. Another thing would be run and map twice. Please listen to me carefully. Do not fully trust your first nmap scan. I am speaking from a ton of experience. Run it twice, thank me later. Do not be afraid to read white papers, especially the ones from ExploitDB. Do not shy away from reading in general. I personally went through the ones for MS SQL Server when I was doing some SQL injection, which was pretty helpful. I recommend that you read that one if you're struggling with SQL injection like I was. And I say was because I'm getting better at it. I'm not as scared 
of it as I used to be a few months ago. If you don't read things in general, if you just skim, don't skim. You might skip something that is exactly what you're looking for because you missed a couple of words. So take your time to read some stuff. It might take you 15, 20 minutes, but that's going to save you hours or days in the labs. Trust me. Okay, enough about enumeration. If you have enumerated properly, you're probably going to be able to get a shot. And if you're not a system level user, like in some cases, you're going to need to escalate your privileges. So welcome to the chat, privilege escalation. Another thing I'd beg you to do, please, please do not rush to run automated scripts. This includes both the P's, both exploit suggestors, Sherlock, power up, you name it. Take your time to do some manual testing first. Best case scenario, you find the path as soon as you run some of the commands in your checklist. I'm sure you have one of those, right? I've personally built my own manual enumeration checklist from both courses and experience. Some of the best courses offered in the industry are by TCM Security. They have both the Linux and the Windows Privilege Escalation courses, which is where I got most of my notes when I was starting out and which I still use to this day. To this day! To this day! To this day! I used a lot of the techniques in the labs. These two courses, the Linux and the Windows Privileged Escalation courses, can be used to prepare for the OACP and to get you better at hacking in general. If you haven't already looked at these courses, you are living under a rock. I suggest you do. Links will be in the description. And yes, they are affiliate links. Thank you. Then there's the Privileged Escalation courses offered by Tiberius, which people usually talk about when it comes to the OACP. I've personally not done them, but I'll leave the links in the description below. Brandon has a bunch of good privilege escalation videos on his channel. And then there's a bunch of checklists and mind maps you can find online, like on GitHub. Those are pretty free. Be stingy with your money when it comes to cybersecurity. Don't always spend money. You can learn a lot for free. So think about where you're going to spend money. If you can justify the purchase, then go ahead. Use it. It's your money. I will also leave links to some of my favorite free resources in the description as well. Next couple of things on the list of things I've learned from the OSCP would be post exploitation and persistence. These are particularly important in the labs because there are a lot of interdependencies between the machines and the networks. I think they do this to mimic some sort of enterprise environment with a ton of machines to get you used to moving around inside an environment. So dump hashes, crack them if you can, Pass them around with crack map exec if the cracking doesn't work, but don't add users and SSH keys and all that stuff. You're using shared labs, so be nice and considerate. The best way for the OACP to maintain persistence is to dump patches and passwords. That way you can always go back inside if you need to look at something again. This then ties into good note taking, which is something I also learned. Don't just copy and paste some of the commands you ran and think you remember how it went when you come back to it 25, 30, 60 days later. This is what I personally did at first. And I know for a fact, the dot five machine had three lines as my notes, three whole lines as my notes, two commands and one thing. I don't remember what it was, but when I looked at it again, it looked so cringe. I wanted to slap myself in the face. Like, what were you thinking? But at the same time, I then realized how much I refined my methodology and my note taking and it's it's pretty good at this point but if i do fail at least i know my notes were looking good so be intentional about note taking have a whole template that you use for each machine this in turn allows you to be intentional about your methodology have a checklist of things you're going to do before you start when you're in the middle when you get a shell when you're trying to prevesc and when you're doing your post exploitation the fun part of course is the hacking and the shell popping but being intentional about your notes and your methodology will allow you to do this better. When you're running through the checks listed in your notes, remember to time yourself. Have a one set time for everything you look at. If that time runs out and you think you're close, add a couple more minutes to it. If it rings again and you think you're close, add just a tad more, tad more. If it rings the third time and you're not there, leave it my friend. You're wasting time, you're down a rabbit hole and you need to get out and look for something else. Not timing yourself is usually how a lot of people spend hours and hours in rabbit holes without realizing. Next thing you look up, it's been five hours, you're in the exam. That's a lot of time gone and you don't even have a shawl yet. That would be disappointing. So 
time yourself. In timing yourself, you also get used to the pressure of working fast, thinking fast, thinking outside the box, having various things around you with a time set that you're looking at. It'll make you better, bruh. If then you look at everything else and you've timed yourself, set another timer and start again. This time, make sure you're being diligent about everything. Keep it simple, stupid. Or some people say, keep it stupid, simple. That one thing you think might not work because it's stupid is going to work. So keep it simple. Run and map twice, please. In relation to time management and being fast and efficient, automate everything. Well, at least everything that can be automated. And do this in a way that suits you best. Automate your scans. For my scans, I've automated my process by myself. I hate auto recon so much because it just gives me so much output that I don't need to look at at that time. And so I don't use it. I automated my scans in a way that suits me so that I look at my checklist and I go through things one by one and not just have go buster, Nick toe, and you end my scan throwing things at you at the same time. Nah, that's confusing, bruh. Well, for me at least. Some people love it and it's a good tool. Thanks to Tiberius for developing it. But if it doesn't work for you, don't worry about it. I'm currently still automating most of my tasks when it comes to enumeration, information gathering, stabilizing shells. I'm actually working on a script that's gonna automate stabilizing my shell and uploading and downloading stuff. Look out for that. It might be on my GitHub soon. And it's specifically OACP friendly. Another thing I'd like to mention is that make use of the forums. In this video, there's a mention of the forums and he kind of paints the use of the forums in a negative light, which I understand to some extent. He says something along the lines of the labs were designed for someone to struggle their way through and learn how to solve a problem by themselves without any help. But to be honest, if it's been three, four, five days and you spend countless hours working on a machine and you are not getting anywhere, is there still a point in struggling when you can get a hint and move on. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actual walkthrough. There actually aren't any walkthroughs for the most part in the forums. It's just hints and hints and hints. And if you get a hint and you're able to get a shell and then you do privilege by yourself, that's a dub in my opinion. Sure. Just know when and how to use the forums. When I was working on some machines on slow days, I would think to myself, let me just look at the forums, get hints and just move through this box. But then I'd stop myself and I'm like, mm -mm -mm, you need to actually do this yourself. And then I'd take a break, recalibrate, come back, actually focus on doing that machine. And uh, what do you know? I actually pop a shell, privisk, and we move on to the next box. Those are some of the satisfying times. And those are some of the days I did tell myself, don't use the forums. But then there's some instances way back. I'm like, this is not going anyway. I'm not going to figure this out. Let me use the forums. At least I'll learn something. The last thing that ties into using the forums is using servers and chat rooms like Discord and Reddit to chat with other people that are studying for the OSCP. I've said this before and I'll say it again. You're not the only one who's studying for the certification. You're not the only one who wants the certification. There are a bunch of people out there who are willing to study with you and grow with you in your studies, in life in general. And you can all pass. Just don't cheat though. Be diligent when joining servers and chat rooms to talk about and study for the OSCP. There's some people that obviously make those things to cheat. You don't want to be part of that squad. I mean, if you do, then hey, bra, do you? You could join my Discord server. Link will be in the description below. It is a user friendly and we don't promote cheating. So it's kind of safe in that regard. You'd actually be surprised by how much you can learn from random strangers on the internet. It's actually crazy. So don't get caught up with the wrong squad and you should be fine. Outside of the OSCP specific stuff, I've also learned some stuff I can use in my general day-to-day -day life in cybersecurity. Things like basic antivirus evasion using different programming languages like Python, PowerShell, C, using C2 frameworks to attack Active Directory, as well as client-side attacks, such as masking PDFs and Word docs with payloads to get shells. That was actually pretty fun. I think that was the best part of the course, the client side attacks. So one question that might arise would be, will the OACP teach you things that are applicable in the real world? The answer to that is yes. Does that justify paying? Well, that depends on you, bro. But uh, 
that is it from me. That is most of the stuff I've learned from the course. My exam is scheduled for the beginning of August, sometime around there. If everything goes according to plan, that is when I'll take the exam and hopefully I don't fail. Wish me luck. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the description below. I, of course, can't divulge any sort of specific course information. I mean, you know that, but ask whatever question you may have. The next update will be just before my exam. I'll be telling you how the course on the labs compare to outside resources with regards to preparation because now I'm going to be doing HTB and some other web app stuff that I find on the interwebs. But until then, um, stay out of trouble, don't get hacked.